Welcome to section 2.3 on planar geometric algebra. First, before we go into this, we need to set up what the planar geometric algebra is. So consider a 2D space spanned by orthonormal basis vectors E1 and E2. If you remember this, this is the definition for a basis. They satisfy the following equations, and it's easy to verify that the scalar product of them is equal to zero. So the last entity in this algebra is the bivector, which is the highest grade element. In any algebra, the highest grade element is called the pseudoscalar. Going into geometric algebra, it is denoted as capital G sub 2, and any multivector within can be decomposed within the basis below. The sum is pretty easy to compute. While the product is not difficult to compute, it is tedious as can be seen right here. Luckily, this full product is never really used. Now for the bivector and its products, which is where planar geometric algebra becomes really useful. The bivector is equal to the following. It simplifies just to the geometric product of the two orthonormal vectors because their scalar product is equal to zero. The bivector thus anti-commutes. And then if you multiply a vector by the bivector in planar geometric algebra, on the left hand side, you rotate that vector by 90 degrees clockwise, which is also equal to negative pi over two. And if you multiply it from the right, then you rotate it by pi over two, which is just anti-clockwise 90 degrees. This can be visualized really easily if you imagine the two orthonormal vectors right here, e sub one, e sub two. If you multiply e sub one, by the bivector from the left, then it rotates it here to negative e sub 2. And if you multiply e sub 2 by the uh, by the bivector from the right, then it multiplies it or it rotates it down here. And thus, there's a really easy way to encode rotations using the bivector. And then it's very easy to prove that a bivector squared in planar geometric algebra is equal to negative 1. Thus meaning that these geometric considerations have naturally led to a quantity that squares to negative 1. This provides an excellent geometric interpretation for the imaginary unit used throughout math and physics. Thus the connection with complex number can be found very easily, just as, by de as defined right here. And as we remember, i refers to the pseudoscalar of the algebra of interest, and because we are in planar geometric algebra, i is the bivector. But remember that complex numbers represent their sum as a vector, but vectors are one grade whereas bivectors are two grade. Thus we can use this natural map from x vector, that's basically a sum of the orthonormal basis vectors, and you can map that naturally over to the multivector z, which represents complex numbers. Therefore planar geometric algebra can naturally represent complex numbers. And then if you consider the conjugate of them, you can f prove that this is equal to the, or a logically equivalent to the operation from geometric algebra called reversion, which is where you switch the, the, you reverse the order of the products in a given operation. And this can be proven easily through the equations in this slide. Because that they're, they're isomorphic to the complex numbers on, in planar geometric algebra, we can rotate them the same way, which is what this slide basically proves. However, it's important to note that these are not, that x prime right here is an, not anti, it doesn't anti-commute per se, but when you uh, commute one of the terms in the product, you must change the sign of the bivector. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that covered everything that you need to know. And in the next section, we'll be covering 2.4, which is spatial geometric algebra, geometric algebra in three dimensions.